What's up guys, Dreezy here, and we are back with a weekly rant, and <laughs> we haven't done one of these in a minute, especially for Call of Duty. I think our last one was about Black Ops League play, and I forgot how long ago that's been. But the Vanguard beta has been out for about three weekends and whatnot, and obviously, because I'm a big COD fan, I've been on it. And... <sighs> This game has potential, I'm not gonna lie, but I just wanna get my thoughts out there about the state of this game. I'm gonna bring up the good, but a majority of this video is gonna be a rant about the bad and what needs to be fixed. Hopefully, um, you guys agree. If not, let me know. And yeah, let's get on with this video. Also, by the way, for my Switch viewers, I do have NBA 2K22 on the Switch. Videos will be back shortly. So, this year is so much better. Thank God. So, look forward to taking on 2K videos again. Because I cannot wait to start making them. Alright, let's get into this rant, y'all. If it sounds like I'm echoing, it's because I'm at my girlfriend's house for the week. So, yeah, sorry about that. Well, for the good, um... It's the Modern Warfare engine. Now, I know what everyone says, but Modern Warfare sucked. Well, you're not really wrong about that, but Modern Warfare sucked for its own reasons. The most important reason here being the maps. I'm glad to say that, minus some issues that I will get on later on, so far the four maps here are very playable compared to the maps from Modern Warfare. Plus the four Champion Hill map, they're playable and that's all we want the key to making a good shooting game or a good COD game is to have good playable maps that promote movement and whatnot but yeah I'm, I'm gonna go with the flaws in, in a minute but for now at least the maps are better than modern warfare that plus the engine could mean good things in the future the guns have recoil that's another hidden good feature, at least to me. Because for the longest time, these guns have been lasers in Call of Duty. And anyone is out there, and I mean anyone and everyone's out there saying, Yeah, I got the gunny, I got the gunny. Yeah, I can't miss. Of course you can't miss. I mean, you shouldn't miss. The gun is shooting like a straight line. But in this game, guns have recoil. So, for me, that's a good thing. But I will get more about that later. And for my final good point is, hey, it's World War II. I mean, if you hate World War II, I don't know. Maybe you just hate school history and whatnot, but this, this is personal. To me, World War II is the shit. So, yeah. But let's get to the reasons why you're here. The actual complaints and things that I hope they fix. Because y'all not here to hear me talk about the good things. And the very first thing I'm just going to talk about I said a good thing is that people die, but at the same time, people die too fast. Like, you cannot fight back in this game. If you can't fight back, it means either someone lagged or someone has no aim. But, oh, man. Like, we need a time to kill adjustment. I'm not saying make it like Cold War where fights can go on forever. But put it between Modern Warfare and Cold War. Like, something needs to be done about the time to kill. Because the time to kill being so fast leads to so many different other bad things. The camping situation. Because pretty much little Timmy's hiding in the corner with his gun already aimed in. Because he knows pretty much first person to see someone ends up winning unless, you know, lag. So, yeah. I'm not saying that a slower time to kill will fix camping. Nothing will ever fix camping and campers. But it would definitely like give the person who's dying for the camper a chance to fight back. And I feel like that's more important than anything else. The next thing that needs to be looked at, tuned up or something, and they said they're gonna do it, but <laughs> they definitely need to look at the sound system. Because I don't know how this got past Q&A 
I don't know how people play this game in the studio or at their homes or wherever they're making this game due to COVID. I don't know where, but somewhere, somehow, someone said this game is fine in its current state. Now, I have to ask you, is this game made for deaf people? Because that's where it is. <laughs> like, I cannot hear people. I can't hear people tap running behind me. I can't hear the guy who's about to knife me in my back. Like, come on. Then on top of that, and this goes into like another bad point in the game, you also have a perk that's named Recon. So on top of not being able to hear anyone around me, I also can't see people on my radar unless I have that perk. Like, why are you messing with Call of Duty core fundamental things? What's that saying? If it's not broken, don't fix it? Like, come on. Now, one thing people always want to say is that, oh, in modern warfare, everyone just sound hard and camp in corners. Well, Vanguard has no sound, and people are still camping in corners. You can't stop camping. I'm sorry. <laughs> but by ripping the sound out the game is not the way. Like, I said it multiple times on my stream. I don't know if my teammates are deaf, if I see yell at my teammates, but there's so many times where I'm being shot at by someone to my right or someone to my left, and my teammate does not turn around at all to acknowledge that person. And it's not like a one-off thing where it's just that one bad person. No, this is even the guy on the top of the leaderboard who don't realize what's happening. And I'm just like, bro, how do you not hear what's happening? Then I realize, oh, I'm playing Vanguard. That's why. No one can hear what's happening. Like, even when my girl plays, like, normally on, uh, like, other games, so like Cold War, Warzone, even Splitgate, I tell her, put her headset on so she can at least hear what's happening. But after day one, two weeks ago on the Vanguard beta, I pretty much said, don't even bother. It, it's not going to make a difference. It's really not. I will argue this. You can sound hard people in a 1v1 setting. Like on Champion Hill and whatnot, when the solo mode's there, or in the 6v6 tactical settings, you can do that there. But <sighs> any other setting, you're not gonna hear people and or hear gunshot, and that's a problem. Like that's actually an issue, and it needs to be like touched up, looked at, something. And the fact that this like this final week is a week long beta test and you can't patch it in for whatever reason because it's apparently too big, that's a joke. Like, how are we gonna test your game if you're not even gonna give us the actual game to test, if you know what I'm trying to say here? Come on now. All right, my next thing that needs to be fixed in this game for it to be even better is, I, I know I said guns having recoil is a good thing, but let's go to the bad thing about that real quick. It's not the recoil I'm about to complain about. It's the flinch. And guns have way too much flinch. Now for those who don't know what flinch is, it's pretty much like the effect of being shot in Call of Duty. When you get shot, your gun goes up to simulate you being shot. So now there's more recoil being added. Yeah, that's pretty much flinch. And in Vanguard is just too much. It's to the point where I swear every gunfight is just completely random. Because I'm gonna give you a scenario that I gave my team all the time in streams. Person A, me, would shoot person B. Person B would start getting shot, turn around somehow, and just start shooting at me. But because I shot him first, he's getting the flinch effect. And now his first shot towards me is going to be a headshot. That's the only form of fighting back that I see in this game. Because I guarantee if this beta track my stat, a majority of my deaths in this game from actual like firefights where me and him are both shooting each other are headshot. In Cold War, I would say he had the better aim. He aimed better. And I'd be okay with that because in Cold War, every gun's a laser. But in Vanguard, I can't even say that. I just gotta say that man won because he got the flinch luck. 
Is that my ego at work? Probably. But at the same time, I swear, because even on, even when it's the other way around, where I'm not the guy being shot at, I've won my fair share of gunfights that I had no, no right to win. And I felt bad for the other dude. <laughs> but Flint needs to go. Like, it's either too much or it just needs to, like, it just needs to stop making old gunfights RNG. Like, try sniping someone after you've already been shot once. <laughs> this one right here is, like, a really, really, really small nitpick compared to my other things, but... Can you guys fix the throwing grenade animation? And I don't mean, like, me throwing a grenade. I mean me throwing a grenade back. Like, for example, if person A throws a grenade at me, and I pick up the grenade and try to throw it back, there's pretty much no point with because by the time I pick it up, I'm already dead. Like... I don't know, either the animation's way too long to throw it back, cause let's be real, almost everything in this game is slow, like the sprint is slow, your weapon pull up time is slow, your reload is slow, like everything is slow. <laughs> so of course me picking up a grenade to throw it back at you is somehow slower than my last himself. So I have to ask, like, what's the point of that animation even being in the game? Yeah, it's a COD animation. It's been in, like, almost every COD since, like, COD 4, maybe. If not even in COD 2. But at this point, there's no point, because in most cases, you're already dead. <laughs> now, the one way they could actually fix this is by bringing back that, um, what's that perk from COD 4? Or, well, that war toss back? Just bring that back where it resets the grenade timer. Like, that would actually help your dreadful perk setup that I will gladly get to in a minute. <laughs> but yeah, like, do something with the grenade throwback because at this point, there's no there's no point in even trying to throw back grenades. It's either just run or just sit there and die. The kill streaks. Please, do something about the kill streak. Like, okay. First things first, I, I hope this is not the final setup, but I really have to pick between a UAV, a counter UAV, or a care package. <sighs> like, I don't know if it's always been like that in Modern Warfare, because, yeah, I don't know much people who survived Modern Warfare. But, yeah, personally, I just didn't like that. But let me elaborate more on the kill streak issue that I have. First things first, having kill streaks and not score streaks is an L. At, th at this point, it's an L. Because all you get in like domination games are people who just sit in the corner. And I know what I said, you can't stop camping. But this probably makes it 10 times worse as well. People just sit in the corner or sit like 50 feet away from the objective. And just pretty much just play for your kill streak. Not they don't play to win the they don't play to win the game. They play for their stats and their objective. Now I know what you're gonna say. People did the same thing for score streaks, Dreezy. True. But at least you had an incentive to win and go for the hard point or something. Cause you got points towards your kill streak. But here you get no points at all because it's not a kill. So people just camp, camp, camp until they can get their dogs and guess what you got your dogs but now you lost the game good job good job man like we need a score streak system to encourage people to play obj and whatnot or at least try to and this also encourages obj players i guess to keep playing the game because now they can also get streak to help out the team as well so that now that they're getting kill streaks as well, or in this case score streaks, they can feel useful, get their streaks in, and feel good as well. Now I'm not asking for the Cold War method where it carries over through death, everyone can get their kill streaks. Keep it where once you die, your score gets reset. Boom, easy. So now not everyone has an air patrol or whatnot. Or not everyone has a veto warship seven minutes into the game. See, that's how you keep it balanced now. 
give everyone a score streak, but make it where it doesn't continue after death. So it always restarts once you die. Boom, I just fixed the situation. But can we please talk about the counter UAV? Like not even the UAV, even though I'm sure the UAV suffers the same problem, but more so the counter UAV. The counter UAV kill streak lasts way too long. Way too long, and you can only have one of the sky at the same time. Like, do you know how many times I I probably already broken my what my right D-pad button trying to call it in and I can't do it because there's already one in the sky from our team. And I'm like, yo, how long has this been up in the sky for? Now, if you can destroy them, this probably won't be a problem, but here's the catch. I don't believe you can destroy these kill streaks because either the launcher doesn't lock onto these things or you're not alive long enough to have to destroy these things. So it's just up there flying forever and ever and ever. And there's nothing you can do about it. The last kill streak I want to talk about is the mortar barrage. Matter of fact, no, there's one more, the, the, the glad bomb. But first, let's get to the, um, the mortar patrol, mortar barrage. The mortar, I don't know how this got past q and I don't know who tested this. I don't know who job this was, but what were you doing in the office? <laughs> okay, so first things first, right? When you have this kill streak, you can't run. You cannot run at all because if you run, you glitch yourself and you can't call any kill streak or, and I believe you also can't call your field upgrade. So, well, there goes that. <laughs> so now you're dead and then you get a second chance. And apparently, I guess this is also common sense in a way, you can't call this if you're under a roof, even if it's like a sky roof, like on Eagle's Nest again. You can't call it because you're under a roof. So, yep, you just died again trying to put it down. Like, why is this kill streak so hard to use? Like, it's a good kill streak in the long run, but just to put it down is like a second job. And when combined with the spawns of some of these maps, good lord. And you know what? You know, yeah, let me get to this point while we're here. The mortar barrage is completely broken in Team Deathmatch. And this is due to the squad spawns that I will probably get into soon. And everything about Team Deathmatch. The spawns really don't flip that much. Meaning, there's either spawn A or spawn B in like 24v24 Team Deathmatch. So once you throw the, um, the barrage, more than likely the other team is just going to keep spawning there again and again and again like i have gotten 10 plus eliminations from one single mortar barrage and that is wild why don't the other team just spawn in the middle somewhere i don't know but they just kept spawning there and i could just hear like in some games you could hear the death mic just get even worse and worse as the other team just gets frustrated more and more and more like, who designed the squad spawn system, and why is it in the game? Why can the other team just not spawn someplace else? And I don't mean, like, on the other side of the map. I mean, like, just spawn them in the middle, random, random spawn points, like any other video game. Nope, it's either spawn A or spawn B. Come on, man. This is, like, 15 years of Call of Duty at work. How do you mess this up? And the glide bomb. You just can't aim this thing. I, I, I swear. Unless they fixed it and I just don't know yet because I just stopped using it. You cannot aim this thing. Like, it just not. It Sometimes it just doesn't move. <laughs> like, this is also one of the kill streaks that it seems like it's a second job to use. Like, why? Like, come on, man. I pretty much already started talking about this one problem, but I'm just going to get right back into it. The spawns, like, 
how I, I don't understand why every Call of Duty game that comes out cannot get spawns done correctly. And this game has to be probably the worst spawn system I've seen. First things first, they brought the um, squad spawn system back from Modern Warfare. So in a team deathmatch setting, almost everyone's spawning together in the same place. So um, on Red Star, you're pretty much spawning on like C dominates behind that one building while the other team spawns in like the small alleyway behind the building across from it. And on the other side of the map, I believe you're spawning on the theater side. So I believe those are the spawns in that area. While the other team that spawned by um, C domination, their second spawn is on the other side of behind that building. And those four spawns do not change for those teams. Unless one team to get in there should absolutely pushed in. Maybe it flips, but it's rare to watch the spawns flip. If anything, they flip once a game, just once. And for a Call of Duty game, that's wild. Like, there's no spawns in between any any place else. And to me, that needs to go. Like, you need more organized spawns. Now, I sound like I'm about to contradict myself with my next statement. Because they have this somewhat in objective game modes and like patrol and domination and in 2424 um patrol the spawns are just so erratic i don't know how people can just have fun because half the time you're spawning on like the point spawning in each other like i'm sorry but red star has to be probably the worst map in the game only because <laughs> of the spawns <laughs> Like in Red Star, you are literally spawning in each other, shooting each other in the face while his friend spawns right there while you're hard aiming, shooting his other friend. Bro, <laughs> that's not a spawn system. That's a cold disaster. <laughs> Fix the spawn. It's not that difficult. Like, Red Star might be the worst objective map in the game due to the spawn. And with that logic being said, I think the map is Guvato or something like that. The, the jungle map might be the worst team deathmatch map in the game because you either spawn on Sniper Hill A or Sniper Hill B. Spawns don't flip unless, again, you're getting your shit pushed in. And even then, it flips just once. And if you're losing, you, you, <laughs> there's no escape. If you're losing and you're playing a smart team that don't push like too much into the spawns, you pretty much already lost that game. Because if they're not gonna push the spawn, the spawns ain't flipping. And <laughs> at least the game's in fast because you're not gonna be in there for longer than three minutes. But yeah, the spawns in this game are the worst. I have seen in this whole series and I just don't understand how like almost 17 years later <laughs> fix the spawn but I think I'm just gonna keep it at that for now like I'm not gonna bring up skill based matchmaking and all that like there's no there's no sense that's clearly here to stay but the other one that I brought up the other points I hope those can be fixed. They have a month and a half and well really they have a year to fix these problems because let's be real. The game is gonna come out in the same state it is in right now. But hopefully, like in the past Call of Duty games, they can get the game to the shape they want it to be in by at least January or February of next year. I have my hopes high because if done correctly this could be one of the better Call of Duty that we played. But that only goes as far as our devs go. Like I said in past 2K videos. So. We can only hope for the best. But till next time y'all. Stay safe out there. And. Peace.